Have you ever been working on your city and looked at the traffic gauge just to realize it was under 80% and then proceeded to lose your f***ing mind? So you started building this, that, <laughs> or there I say, this? Now your traffic gauge is back at 85% or so and all this is fine and dandy, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, you may think you've decreased traffic, but in fact, you've most likely increased it. But this isn't entirely your fault. The community has led people to believe that a high number was good on the traffic gauge and a low number was bad, and directly correlated to the amount of traffic you had in your city, when this is entirely true. But by building those giant highways and the crazy interchange that you oh so proudly posted on the city subreddit, all you really accomplish is just temporarily reduce the time of car trips for your sims, making the use of car even more desirable. Now the more your city grows, the more you're gonna wanna add highways, and in no time, your city will look like a biffa thumbnail. So put down the traffic engineer textbook and listen up, here are three tips to actually reduce traffic in city skylines. Slowing down car traffic By increasing the time it takes for sims to get from point A to point B, they're more likely to use other transportation methods, such as transit, walking, or biking. There are a few ways to achieve this. The first one being stop signs and traffic lights. I tend to stick to stop signs on the smaller intersections and uh, traffic lights on the bigger ones. For this, you could either use the Traffic Manager mod or the Traffic Route tabs in Vanilla City Skyline. Not only does this reduce car trip speed, but it also makes it safer for other users. Not that pedestrian or biker safety is a thing in City Skyline, but who are you to play God with fake people's lives, Robert Moses? Another way to slow down traffic is to reduce the speed limit. As far as my dumbass knows, this is only achievable with mods like Traffic Manager and cannot be done in Vanilla. Speed limits are usually dictated by the size of roads in city skyline. So typically a smaller road will have a smaller speed limit. So if you're playing vanilla, your only option really is to play around with the size of your roads. I guess you could say size does matter. The third way to slow it on car trips is to build more intersections by decreasing the size of your block. But more on that in tip number two. Build pedestrians, bike and transit infrastructure. Now that you made the use of cars less desirable by reducing trip length, you need to provide your sims with an alternative way of getting around. Bike lanes. That's it. Bike lanes. Build them. Lots of them. As a general rule, your sims- Your sims? What the f As a general rule, your sims should not have to walk or bike more than two blocks to get to a bike lanes. Bike lanes need to be an integral part of your planning, not an afterthought. I also like to turn on the encourage biking policy as well. When it comes to pedestrian infrastructure, it's pretty straightforward since pretty much all non-highway roads have a sidewalk, but you still need to make walking more attractive. The use of stop signs that we went over on tip 1 is a great way to do that. Another way to shorten a walking trip is to reduce the size of your blocks. Here's an example of why a smaller block makes walking a more attractive option. In image number 1, it would take almost double the time to get to point B than it would in image number 2 so your sims could be more likely to choose driving over walking. Lastly, make sure your sims have a way to get through obstacles, such as train tracks or, dare I say, a highway. Here are a few examples of what I did in the current city that I'm working on. This is far more space efficient than a car bridge or tunnel would be, and so you're able to put a lot more of them, making the transition from one side of the tracks to the other more efficient as a pedestrian or a cyclist. As far as transit is concerned, the same principles as the bike lanes apply. Your sim should not have to walk more than two blocks to get to a transit line. The type of transit really doesn't matter, but just know that transit that isn't affected by car traffic like metro tends to be faster so therefore your sims are more likely to use it. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, so just pick whatever transit you think fits your city or your neighborhood the best. Another way to make sims walk or bike more is by watching tip number three, mixed use neighborhoods. I see a lot of people build their cities like this. They separate residential, commercial, and office space. This is either because they think that noise pollution is a bigger deal than it actually is, or maybe it's simply because they actually live in, oh, I don't know, literally 99% of North America. But don't let your real life experiences get in the way of you building a great place to live. There are a few ways that I like to achieve mixed use neighborhoods. If you have access to the Steam Workshop, there are a few incredible assets that allow you to layer a residential complex or tower on top of a commercial base. I highly suggest you check them out. I'll leave a link in the description below. 
Those assets are few and far between, so another way I like to achieve a similar result is by downloading the service blocks. And whenever you plop down a building that looks like it should have commercial space at the bottom, I like to just sneak a little sneak a little commercial block in there, you know, a little sneaky block as they say. Uh, you're gonna need the move it mod to make this process slightly easier. If you're a vanilla player, your options are slightly more limited. You will simply have to zone residential, commercial, and office together. Obviously this doesn't really apply to industrial zoning, but it also doesn't mean that you need to zone your industries at the other end of the map. You know you've done it. And as an extra tip, remember that density is your friend. The closer people are to each other, their work or stores, the less likely they are to drive places. So if the traffic gauge is BS, how do you judge the level of success of these principles? It's easy. Zoom in. Are people on the sidewalks? Are they on the bike path? Are they waiting for the bus or the tram? If yes, then you've succeeded. Go on, zoom in some more. Do you see a smile on your sim's face? If so, then it's a success. So stop building cities for yourself and start building cities for your sims. You selfish f